What's going on guys? Welcome to Seriously Fast Media. I'm your host, of course, Tom Ludermoser, and today I want to talk to you. It's a quick video about how NASCAR makes money. And this is a video that I did a little bit of research for. I've seen a couple clips, uh, a little bit I do take from Donut Media, a little bit from uh, thedrive.com, uh, lots of different sources, uh, So and a ton of Googling. I mean, a ton of Googling. So obviously, everybody knows that NASCAR depends on TV numbers. That is why uh, NASCAR seems to, and a lot of fans seem to think that NASCAR does not care about fans in the stands. Well, with that being said, you're almost right on that one. So NASCAR bought the ISC, the International Speedway Corporation, for $2 billion a couple of years ago. So they own a ton ton of racetracks, including my home track of Michigan International Speedway. And they do now really, really want to see more fans in the stands because they're making money that way. Of course, they're going to sell you concessions, tickets, uh, merchandise, track merchandise, not the stuff brought on the team haulers. They're going to make money that way. Uh, they're also going to make money through title sponsors. So for example, 2016 to 2019, Monster Energy paid $60 million to be the title sponsor. That's roughly about $20 million a year. I don't know if one year they paid more or less. That information was not easy to find. I Googled that for, oh hell, two hours almost. I really tried to find that answer. I could not find it. Um, but with that being said, the biggest income for NASCAR is by far broadcast TV deals. NASCAR has a multi-year contract with two major networks, NBC as well as Fox. Uh, in 2012, NASCAR signed a $2.4 billion contract deal for broadcast rights on Fox and Fox Sports 1. Um, obviously, the parent broadcaster, Fox, they can choose, they broadcast on Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports 2, the main network TV. Um, that deal lasted between 2012 and 2020, and they extended it for $1.4 billion more. Now, with that also being said, NBC signed a contract to keep NASCAR on the air from 2013 till 2024, which is where they will renegotiate that contract, just like they will be renegotiating the Fox one here probably very shortly as well. I could not find an exact time when this current uh, agreement expires, but that was for $4.4 billion. So in English, that's $8.2 billion between 2012 and 2024. So a period of about 12 years, they will be making $8.2 billion. Now, that does not go only to NASCAR. A lot of people always talk about, well, the TV money, the TV money, the TV money. That's where teams and tracks make most of their money. Now, 65% of that $8.2 billion will go to the tracks, uh, the track ownership. I don't know exactly how that gets split up now that NASCAR owns ISC uh, with the... International Speedway Corporation, 25% um, will go to, it always goes to the race teams. And then another 10% stays in-house at NASCAR. Now, 2006 obviously was the peak of NASCAR. That was the peak of popularity. That was the highest viewership. That was the highest attendance records. I mean, that you could not take NASCAR off of that pedestal. 2007 came with the car of tomorrow. That did make a difference. The uh, recession that hit in 2008, that made a difference. You started seeing some of these big giant powerhouse teams, the five car team at Roush, started taking a nosedive. A lot of those teams did. NASCAR implemented quite a few different rules and they have tried to make it to spice things up a little bit over the last several years with implemented implementation of the playoffs, implementation of stage racing to prevent one driver from just taking off and leading all the laps. Um, it did kind of take a little bit of strategy out of the game, but NASCAR has implemented many, many, many different rules changes to try and keep that on-track product 
what you and I watch every weekend, entertaining. That's why you tune in and I tune in and I spend tons and tons and tons of money to go to these races because, I mean, hell, Michigan's about 45 minutes from me, MIS, Michigan International Speedway. It's still 65, 70 bucks a ticket, even though it's definitely not one of the more popular tickets on the circuit. Um, it's some of the most boring racing. It's very spread out. There's no, unless there's a very late race restart, there is no side-by-side -side racing for wins. Uh, this past race that I went to at MIS, Ryan Blaney won, and it was the most entertaining race I have watched in years at Michigan International Speedway. So with that being said, that makes a huge difference. So that's why NASCAR does do the rule changes because they want you to go and watch. They want you to tune in and watch. And because if you're tuning in, NASCAR can charge more for those broadcast rights to Fox and NBC. Maybe a potential third uh, broadcaster coming up with these new uh, contract negotiations. Maybe even a potential for streaming. Millennials, that 18 to 49 range, the millennials, the younger, the Gen Y, Gen Z, whatever they call them. NASCAR needs to target those guys, and you guys are not watching on your typical tube. You're not watching the tube TV. You're not watching that flat screen. You're watching on your phone. You're watching on your tablet. You're watching on your computer at work. Don't tell nobody. Um, you're streaming. The broadcast rights for those... You know, you could be watching. There could be millions and millions more people watching than what's actually watching and recorded. We saw just this past weekend that NASCAR, in terms of viewership, outdid Formula One, but in terms of their rating, was lower. I'm in, I'll be blatantly honest with you. I don't understand all that. I'm still re researching it. I'm still studying it. I want to know what I'm talking about before I get into it with you. So that's why I'm not going to do it. But the more people that tune in the more people will, the more those broadcasters are willing to pay for those rights because the more people tuning in, the more they can charge for the advertisements. I'm sure you guys have seen the Liberty commercials. The, uh, <laughs> there's some, the, the pay at the pump. I saved at the pump. The pump? The pump! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that and recorded this. But those commercials that we see every single weekend on NASCAR, the more they can charge for those. And if more people are willing to pay for those commercials, the less you see those same goofy commercials. Sorry, Joey and, and Ryan. But with that also being said, I mean, it's a, a huge thing. A lot of people want NASCAR streaming. They want channels. They want different ways to bring fans in and watch. And I guess we're going to have to figure out how a streaming service viewing NASCAR could potentially pay off for those teams, the tracks, and of course... NASCAR themselves. What do you guys think? Quick little tidbits of information, but that's how NASCAR makes their money overall. I tried to find out how their new uh, title sponsors, their multiple sponsors, you know, Geico, Bush, uh, Coke, and um, why am I brain farting here? <laughs> the, the, the title sponsors for NASCAR, how they are paying, f what they're paying. I could not find it. Uh, it my luck, I Google it again five minutes from now and it's the first one that pops up what they are paying to sponsor it but that monster energy deal that was the last single title sponsor for nascar probably in quite a while what do you guys think was that good information you think you want me to look up something else and do another video for you leave it in the comments section below i'd be more than happy to do it make sure you guys get your merch hit the link down in the comment section below and of course, leave a thumbs up that helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.